Today on Context, going godless, a court battle that's symptomatic of a looming problem in Canada. No sooner were plans announced for a Christian law school in British Columbia than the debate began in courts of law and in public opinion. Gone are the days when Christian influence was a given in Canadian institutions. Today, religion is shoved further into the margins. Join the debate as Context welcomes advocates and opponents of Trinity Western Law School with the case for and against its right to exist. Among the voices, Canadian legal icon Clayton Ruby. Beyond that, we discuss the bigger question of what right Canadians have to express their faith. When gay rights and religious freedom collide, who wins in court? And how does Canadian society make room for both religious and sexual diversity? Those thorny questions lie at the heart of the controversy surrounding a private British Columbia University's attempt to open the first Christian law school here in Canada. So over to Sheldon Neal with some fast facts. Well, at the center of the controversy, it lies Trinity Western University's Community Covenant. It is a five-page document that students sign when they choose to attend the school. TWU is different than many schools because it has a con Christian educational mission. Students who choose to attend TWU voluntarily pledge to practice a long list of virtues and lifestyle standards. A few of the items mentioned include treat all persons with respect and dignity, tell the truth, avoid plagiarism, drunkenness and stealing, do not use pornography, and abstain from sexual intimacy that violates the sacredness of marriage between a man and a woman. The list goes on at length, but it is the pledge about sex and marriage that has been targeted by lawsuits. Our first guests are three lawyers at the center of this battle in the public square. Earl Phillips is the executive director of Trinity Western School of Law. He previously served at one of Canada's oldest law firms, McCarthy Tetro, where he had a distinguished career in employment and human rights law. He joins us today from Vancouver. Hello, Earl. Hello, Lorna. And Janet F. Buckingham is a professor with Trinity Western University. She's authored the book Fighting Over God, A Legal and Political History of Religious Freedom in Canada. And she's here with us in studio. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Laura. Well, Earl, let's start with you in Vancouver. It uh, seems like you've got a uh, David versus Goliath battle unfolding here. Tell us what are the hurdles that the law school is currently at? Well, I think there's two hurdles. There's the practical hurdles of doing all the things you have to do to start law school. Those are relatively easy actually, especially relative to the legal hurdles we now face. Uh, we have to fight some battles it seems in the courts to confirm that our graduates will be allowed to practice law in the different jurisdictions in Canada. Okay, specifically tell us about what those battles are and where they're all coming from. I think I count five different fronts. You could be right in that count. The uh, first one that comes to mind is here in British Columbia. There's a lawsuit that's been started against the Minister of Advanced Education. That relates to the consent the minister gave to granting a law degree at Trinity Western University. Uh, the second are, uh, and third are two lawsuits that we have had to start in Nova Scotia and Ontario. Uh, where the benchers of those law societies decided against accreditation of our graduates. Uh, then there's a fourth that is not yet underway but is likely to start and that is in British Columbia because the law site of BC has now reversed its original decision that was in favor of Trinity Western and they now like Nova Scotia and Ontario have said that they will not accept our graduates. Okay, Janet, Trinity Western has fought this kind of battle before when it was time to launch a college for teachers, to have a Christian university train school teachers. And that was an eight to one Supreme Court ruling in favor that um, there was no objection to having a Christian covenant, to having those principles that have offended people so at this time. Why the difference? Well, there are some different things about the approval process. So for the teachers, 
uh, we only had to get approval from the Minister of Advanced Education and the British Columbia College of Teachers. And so that was just one College of Teachers that didn't approve. In the situation of the law school, we understood originally that we had to get approval from the minister again, who approves all academic programs in the province, and the Federation of Law Societies, which is an umbrella organization of all the law societies across Canada. It turns out we needed to get thir oh, sorry, 15 approvals. So there were many, many more places where those who opposed Trinity Western could find ways of ensuring that we didn't get approved. So let's go now to your opposition. We went to his office, sat down with Clayton Ruby, who has launched the case against the right of the law school to exist. Here's what your opposition, Clayton Ruby, had to say. It's an admission barrier. I can't go to that school and be accepted if I want to accept those six words. And they are, as the Supreme Court of Canada now points out in a case called Watkar, um, an attack not just upon my sexual practices, but attack on my identity. And the Constitution, in my view, protects us from that. Let's be clear here that we're not talking about acceptance of students. We're talking about while you are at Trinity Western, and in the case of law school, for your three years in law school here, we are asking you to comply with this community covenant. We are not making it a term of acceptance that you not be gay or that you deny that identity. I want you to listen to Clayton Ruby here. But if you want your law graduates to be accredited by the state, you're entering into the realm which is no longer religion alone. And you want and need the consent in order to market your, your product so that people will pay the twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year that it costs to get a law degree that's useful in the world. And if you want the law societies to allow you to practice law with that law degree, then at that point it's, it's beyond mere freedom of religion. And there has to be a primacy for the right of equality. Okay, Earl? What I will say is uh, respect in this context goes to what kind of society we want to have in Canada. Do we want to have a truly diverse and truly pluralist society? Do we want to allow a number of ideas to be debated and discussed and talked about? A truly pluralist, diverse society understands there are differences, allows room for those differences, allows room for peaceable and respectful discussion, and allows for the fact that we may still end up in disagreement, and yet we live and work together peaceably in this country. That is my ideal. That is what I think we mean by respect. Uh, take a listen to Mr. Ruby here. I think that much of what they prescribe in a sexual area, for example, and no sex rules for these kids, um, assuming anybody honestly believes that 4,000 young people are not going to have sex uh, at university. I, it, it boggles the mind, but assume that. It's an invasion of privacy, constitutional privacy, and I hope somebody challenges it. I don't think that school is entitled to exist. What I'm asserting is that you, in order to override the, the religious perspective, whether it's a right or not at this stage, I, it's a tricky point, but who, want, who cares? There has to be some evidence of harm caused to the community that you're trying to benefit. In this case, that's equality. And I had evidence from a number of academics showing that this is a continuation of the discrimination against gays and lesbians that has been rife in this society and which is now thankfully changing and disappearing. Okay, that is one of Canada's toughest lawyers saying you don't have a right to exist as a religious university, as a Christian university. Janet, how does that make you feel? Well, it, it certainly makes us um, marginalized and it makes us not accepted in our society. Uh, these are the beliefs that are shared by our community and we invite people to come and study as part of a Christian community um, with a shared set of uh, principles and values that we live by and uh, Mr. Ruby has said we shouldn't exist, where we shouldn't be allowed to exist. Um, Earl, can the law and the charter strike a balance protecting both privacy rights and Trinity Western's right to have this community standards policy? Mr. Ruby talks about constitutional privacy rights. I would have to challenge him on the law. Let me say that there is a fundamental freedom in Canada for conscience and religion, as well as freedom of expression 
and freedom of association. There are also equality rights. And in equality rights, we recognize the rights of gays and lesbians. We also recognize equality rights for religion. So there are these different ideas in the Charter. They sometimes conflict. In the Trinity Western case in 2001, the court said they don't actually conflict under the Charter. You can reconcile them together. And that is the type of balancing, the type of thoughtful approach to recognizing the clear fundamental rights of a religious believer and equality rights of others. Okay, I want to uh, hear from our studio audience that we've got here now, both of you, so stay tuned. We've got some questions here. As a gay man, I have to make a choice between intimacy with my partner or attendance at this university. That is an unfair choice and on its face is discriminatory because it treats two otherwise equal couples differently. If people want to go and get a law degree uh, with whatever values are underlying that, that's one thing. But as soon as that, that institution is inherently discriminatory, I don't think those people should be allowed to become lawyers. They started from a discriminatory standpoint. How are they going to practice? Okay, Janet, answer that, that deep suspicion that people have. I think in Canada, because we don't have very many private universities, we don't really have a, a, a rich understanding of diversity of institutions and allowing different institutions to have a different character. Uh, in the U.S., there are 22 Christian law schools. In the U.S., they consider having this diversity of institutions to be enriching. And some of them, you know, do have very strong faith bases and community standards that are actually stronger than what Trinity Western has. So uh, I guess the question is, is there room in Canada to have a faith-based university where, uh, in this case, Christians can have a Christian ethos and Christian standards that may be different? than what the rest of society has. Okay, that's actually a very interesting question that tests our civility in this country. What do you think? Is there room in Canada for such an institution? I don't think Christianity is under attack uh, in Canada. I don't think that we need institutions that reinforce um, centuries old beliefs that have a harmful effect on people like me. Um, what is what is the purpose? If your goal is to make uh, homosexuality a pariah, Christianity does that on its own. We don't need to reinforce that in other uh, institutions, higher education institutions in particular. Okay. But, but I think they aren't talking about making homosexuality a pariah. They're just saying, can we have a Christian law school in Canada? They're, they're, they, I, would, I would expect that this school will live by that law of Christianity of love. And so there should not be any, any creation of discrimination. Well, thank you both for joining us. Earl Phillips, the executive director of Trinity Western University's Hoped For Law School. And uh, Janet F. Buckingham, author of Fighting Over God and a faculty member at Trinity Western University. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Coming up, a gay student on Trinity Western University's campus shares his experience and the case for and against going godless. So what is religious freedom and why does it matter? My pick this week for Lorna's books can help you answer those questions. It's helped me understand today's changing legal landscape. So go to our website, contextwithlorna.com, click on Lorna's books, and then enter to win a free copy of Fighting Over God by Janet at Buckingham. That webpage again is contextwithlorna.com. Just go to Lorna's books for your chance to win a free copy, our giveaway for you. I'm Rose Meter. I'm a mom, a wife, and an ER doctor in rural Canada. This year, my husband Rob and I have decided to take our four kids on a trip around the world. We have no idea what lies ahead. I'll be updating our journey on the Context with Lorna Duick website with blog posts and videos about our triumphs and trials and adventures. Won't you join us?
Today we're talking about the controversy that Trinity Western University has raised by applying to open a Christian law school in Canada. Is the alternative to go godless in legal education? Justin Trache thinks that's the way to go. He is a leader with the Canadian Secular Alliance. And John Stackhouse is a professor of theology and culture at Regent College in British Columbia. And Brian Sandberg is a recent graduate of Trinity Western's undergrad program in BC. So gentlemen, let's start with this topic of can Canada tolerate an evangelical Christian law school? Justin, you think no, why? Well, for me, the issue isn't whether there should be law schools which are Christian or law schools which have other kinds of religious orientations. The issue really is with this oath that to be a participant, a student or a faculty member at this particular school, uh, you have to pledge not to engage in, um, in sex um, outside of marriage or if you're gay, you can't even engage in sex within marriage. And what this effectively does is it creates a queer quota. So if you're a gay or a lesbian, there are fewer law school openings that you can compete for than if you're a straight Canadian. Okay, let's go to John Stackhouse. Well, it's interesting. The main question is not actually being debated by either side, namely whether Trinity Western University can actually offer competent training in the law. Uh, no one's actually arguing about that. Trinity Western has met all the criteria necessary to offer legal education. Everybody seems to stipulate to that. So instead, we have to argue at the level at which uh, Mr. Trottier, I think, has correctly identified the issues, which are the softer areas of what's the right thing to do. Um, it's not even a question of what the legal thing is to do. It's the question of whether uh, lawyers across the country uh, are happy or even content or even able to tolerate the idea of a law school uh, whose uh, approach and whose values uh, differ from the majority, at okay. least the majority as we see it today. So John, let's take this a step further because as Justin pointed out, it is the oath or it's a code of conduct. It's, it's something they aspire to. Can a, a, a faith community have a, a, a belief system like that when they want to be public? I think the really substantive question is uh, whether Trinity Western needs to require this kind of behavior in order to fulfill its mission. The question is whether things are mission critical. Can Trinity Western offer the kind of education it wants to offer and be indifferent to how students are spending their sexual lives? Trinity Western is saying we're not just trying to convey legal information, anybody can do that, we're actually trying instead to form a certain kind of person and for us uh, that involves the whole person, including sexual relationships. So that's really the issue, is whether Trinity Western could truly offer a Christian education and not care what people are doing in their sexual lives. Trinity Western has the burden of proof to show that it can't do that job without having these kinds of restrictions. And that's where I think the, the uh, debate is most interestingly joined. Can we step okay. back for a second? Because sure, we've Justin. been really debating the, con the specific context of a, of a Christian law school. But we already have anti-discrimination provisions in other parts of our life. So, for example, if a restaurant threw out a gay couple because they had engaged in intimacy in the restaurant, that would clearly be against the Human Rights Code. So why is it that it's okay for a Christian law, law school to have the same kind of discriminatory policies that wouldn't be allowed in these other kinds of contexts? What's well, unique that's exactly about the, the right law question. school? I think, uh, I think Mr. Trottier has, a, has put his finger on exactly the right question. Is running a law school the same thing as running a restaurant? If it's the same thing, then his logic follows. But if, in fact, the formation of people through an educational uh, institution like Trinity Western does, in fact, mandate that everyone in the community abides by a certain set of behavioral standards, uh, then you aren't just uh, selling fish and chips, you're doing something that's much more complicated. And that may mean that the people involved have a higher and more complex standard of common behavior. That's the issue. Okay, we need to go to someone who's been to Trinity now. Brian Sandberg, what was your experience like raising your hand in that climate and saying, I'm gay, I'm going to school here? Being gay has been really important to me my, my whole life. It's part of my identity. and. Uh, when I went there, I just was just very honest with myself. I thought that it was uh, necessary to be open in, in order to make sure that I had the
kind of quality of emotional life that I felt I needed to, to be happy there. And people there just really embraced me with open arms. I think really, um, even though I am a gay Christian, I think I am ideologically in line with most of the things that people uh, believe at Trinity. And I still see myself as a Christian. I don't see myself as less of a Christian just because I am gay. I see myself maybe a little bit different than other people, but that doesn't mean I'm less than the other people who are there. I don't see any reason why Trinity Western wouldn't be trusted with a law school. We're trusted with the School of Nursing. We're trusted with the School of Education. We're trusted with the School of Business. We're trusted with the School of the Arts. We're trusted with all kinds of schools. And I don't see why now there would suddenly be a big controversy over another school because we somehow can't be trusted with that one. I don't think it's uh, very consistent. I was very touched by your 17-page letter, I think it was, when you mm -hmm. sat down and you read this to the guys in the dorm. Tell me about mm -hmm. that experience. That was um, a really scary experience for me at first because I am very familiar with what religious-based homophobia uh, is like. I grew up suicidal in my own home. Um, I've had my mom try to cast a demon out of me. And going to another Christian university is like, I don't know if I've left the out of the frying pan into the fire kind of situation. So I wasn't really sure what I was getting into at that point. That was still my first semester of, of university. And actually, before I even read that letter, I remember I ran away from the dorm meeting because I was so scared. And uh, what happened was my RA went out and looked for me. And he just found me, and he started praying for me. And he said, you need to come back, and you need to share this with those guys. And I did. I told them my story, and they were all very supportive of me. And one of them said, what can we do to help? How can we be supportive of you? And I realized that you know, I had really misjudged people because of where I had come from, uh, because of my previous experiences. And I needed to judge these people based on who they were and not on uh, the narratives that had been fed to me from my previous experiences. Brian, thank you for those opinions. Now, John and Justin, I want to go back to you, because here you have in that Christian and evangelically defined Christian environment, you have someone with differing views of the community covenant saying, I got along just fine. In fact, it was healthy for me to choose to go into that environment. Justin, isn't that what we want in Canada? That kind of Christian belief being able to sit and exist in a differing environment? And I'm certainly glad that Brian had a positive experience and I know that there are a number of gay students who have gone to Trinity Western and have had similarly positive experiences but I'm also concerned about gay students that have tried to start and publicize a gay student society on campus and have felt threatened. We have a gay student society. I started it last semester and it's very open. We have faculty members. Uh, the president's interns come to some of our meetings. Um, we have staff members that come from uh, different uh, departments. And uh, we actually have um, uh, a meeting that is, I think, tonight. And we have you know, dozens and dozens of people that are planning to come. So I, I don't, you know, there have been incidents in the past, certainly. And I've heard of these uh, incidents. And I think that they are a difficult thing that uh, Trinity Western has to come to terms with moving forward. But right now, uh, things have been very healthy. So there are okay. reports from students that they have felt threatened, that they have been told that they're going to hell in, in classes, that they have felt like they couldn't publicize that they were planning to attend these meetings that you're describing? Are, yes, are you saying I've that, heard that doesn't those stories. exist? I've heard some of those stories. Um, this is not recent Trinity Western, though. OK. John, is this? Is this the future for trying to include Cana uh, Christianity into, Cana into Canadian issues? I think uh, Mr. Trottier and, and Brian as well are, are raising very good issues that are part of a co complex here. I've been trying to think of an analogy. And for me, suppose we had, for instance, uh, a law school in Canada that was run by people whose ideology included pacifism. And suppose Canada was drawn into another war, a big war like World War II, and most public opinion was strongly in favor of the war. And this pacifist law school said, look, we've proven that we can educate people competently in the law, but while you're here, we ask you, even if you're a member of the armed forces, that you abide by our community covenant and not engage in any warlike activity. I'd like to think that Canada could tolerate something like that. We might even see it as being a good thing that we have a law school or two or three 
that add different values to the mix of our culture. Christians aren't the only ones who have values that might add to the mix. I wonder what your thinking would be if there was, say, a Muslim Sharia law-based law school. That's exactly the right question to ask, is what if the shoe is on the other foot? That's why I picked pacifism as an example, because mm -hmm. the law school I have in mind in that regard is a Jain law school, not a Christian pacifist, but an, an Indian one. I'm hoping Mr. Trotty and others can see that I'm trying to find legitimate parallels to help us see that people who come to Trinity Western come in with their eyes open. They know what's being asked of them, and there should be a pedagogically sound reason for everything Trinity asks of its students. Now, if that's not the case, and if Trinity Western is just arbitrarily asking everybody there to wear the color blue on Tuesdays, then I think they're being ridiculously discriminatory. If instead they can show, however, that part of their pedagogical concern is to educate people in traditional Christian mores, then I think they ought to be allowed to do it. Okay, gentlemen, thank you, all three of you. Uh, Brian in Calgary, John in Vancouver, and uh, Justin here in the studio. This argument is not going to be going away very soon for Trinity or for the rest of Canada as we work out what it is to be good neighbors in this country. Thank you all very much. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Coming up, my two cents worth on faith, secularism, and freedom. Coming soon on Context, Commander Chris Hadfield takes over ground control at Context. Don't miss learning with us from Canada's best known astronaut. He tells how lessons in space give us tools for life on Earth. I'm Rose Meter. I'm a mom, a wife, and an ER doctor in rural Canada. This year, my husband Rob and I have decided to take our four kids on a trip around the world. We have no idea what lies ahead. I'll be updating our journey on the Context with Lorna Duick website with blog posts and videos about our triumphs and trials and adventures. Won't you join us? This segment is brought to you by Bruce Etherington and Associates. Family harmony and philanthropy helping you help others. I think leaving God behind and embracing secularism is risky business for both individuals and for society as a whole. Democracies depend on religious freedom. It's essential for people of all faiths and for those who claim no faith. To tolerate means to make room for and not seek to eliminate or punish those with whom we disagree. Can Canada tolerate a Christian law school? Of course it can. And when secularism leads to intolerance masquerading as tolerance, we need to find a better path for everyone's sake. For all of us, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching. Join us next week as we explore life beyond the headlines. have a problem with a Christian university, law school, other faculties. I do have a problem with discriminatory policies. I think uh, the, it should be possible to be institutionally Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, whatever, while still being accessible to and willing to admit the full diversity of students. But I think a Christianity that is worth respecting and worth having as part of our institutions should have a more open attitude toward its student body. As a same-sex attracted Christian, I firmly believe that sex is only for a heterosexual marriage relationship. And um, it should be honored in that area. I wouldn't have a problem with it. I've also chosen to be celibate for the rest of my life, unless God wills otherwise.